Anyway, we, we know that input and output have to be the same. So we go by intersection or indicated point. I guess there could possibly be more intersections than are actually indicated. We have A, B, C, and D. Right, don't get uh, don't get put off by the nature of the diagram, because you know, like I mean, I I could I could throw one at you that has an ellipse in it. You know, it really doesn't matter what the angle is and uh, that you're approaching the intersection. It just matters what the value is going in and what the value is coming out. So it could be uh, an X formation like this. Maybe we have just a simple T intersection. Maybe we've got a circular, like a roundabout kind of thing, like over by Kensico. You know, the foundation of a technology assignment. Yeah. We'll get there. So at A... If you look at the arrows that are coming in, we got a 30. I'm going to go with the smaller. We have an X2. On the output, we have an 80 and an X1. And input and output has to be the same, otherwise the network fails. At B... We're coming in at X3 and X5. We're coming out at X2 and X4. C, we're coming in at 100 and X6. We're coming out at X5 and 40. And D, we're coming in at X4 and 40. Coming out at X6 and 90. And you just want to make sure that you've accounted for every possible pairing. Uh, or not even pairing. I don't know why I said that. I just grabbed the word and threw it out there. Every value that you see listed on here should be represented in your network in some way. So, I'm, so I'm missing something, yeah. Because I was looking at it, I see a 20 there. I like I don't have a, I don't have a 20. So at E we have 60 and X1. And coming out X3 and 20. Just do a quick look around, make sure everything's accounted for. That's all. All right. Uh, we'll we'll get to the the matrix aspect of it, but just get a sense of what the question's asking. Assuming the flow must be in the directions indicated, so that means that if you get, we talked about this yesterday. If you get an x2 that's negative, that means it's going in the opposite direction. You did something wrong. All right. So um, so yeah. It, Find the minimum flows in the branches denoted by man. All right, so homogeneous equation. We're looking at x sub 1. Uh, which way are we going to bring it? Uh, I guess we're bringing it the other way. So negative x sub 1 plus x sub 2. We don't have a 3, 4, or 5, so you, you could skip it if you want, or you could write um, plus 0 x of 3, plus 0 x of 4, plus 0 x of 5. I'm going to be tight on room, so I'm just going to skip that part of it and make it a 50. On the right, we subtract 30. It looks like everything's going to the left, and the 0 is going to remain on the right for B, so negative x to the x 2 plus x3, minus x4, plus x5, equals 0. Negative x5 plus x6 equals negative 60. x4 minus x6 equals 50. 
x1 minus x3 equals negative 40. Stop me if I botch that, but I think it's looking pretty good. All right, we'll go to our matrix equation, which would be negative 1, 1, then 3, 4, 5, 0, negative 1, 1, negative 1, 1. Oh, and a 50 at the end, of course. 50 and 0. We got 0, 0, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. I think I'm missing something. 3, 4, 5. On the first row, extra zero. Oh, yeah, because it goes to six, not five. Okay, gotcha. All right, so then zero, zero. And one, two, three, four, negative one, one, negative 60. One, two, three, one, zero, negative 150. And one, two, three, zero, 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 negative forty. Alright. So that's our augmented matrix. And just again, if the question tells you to be sure to write the uh, write it in matrix equation form first, make sure you do that. A X equals B. So coefficient matrix times the column of x1 to x6 equals 50, 0, negative 60, et cetera, et cetera. All right. This, is, uh, this looks like it wouldn't be too bad to do by hand, but I'll tell you the same thing I told the guy when I was buying the air conditioner yesterday. He said, you want to just throw it in the car? Save you $100 on delivery and installation. And I was like, no. He's like, you sure? I was like, yeah, I'm sure. Why? I don't want to. I just, I don't want to do it. So you're going to do it. You know? And so that's the idea here. I don't want to do it. I just don't want to do it by hand. So I'm going to mindlessly type it into the calculator. And let the calculator do the work. And I'm not even going to pay it. Of course, that being said, it's almost after that whole spiel, it's almost like a preordained requirement that I'm going to screw this up. Nothing will shake your confidence quite like this course on linear algebra. Like, I got it. Totally nailed it. No. I screwed something up. All right, think I typed it in right. Gotta say though, I no longer care. Because after that, I gotta do a, I gotta do a double snip here. I got one, two, three, four, five, six rows. I need the remaining one. Bless.
us. Oh, that looks like a negative 150. All right. Okay. So again, we're looking at X1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So X of 1 would be equal to negative 40 plus X of 3, or X of 3 minus 40, however you like. X of 2 would be equal to 10 plus X of 3. X of 3 is not represented, right, in terms of a pivot. So we'll come back to that. X of 4 is equal to 50 plus X of 6. X sub 5 is equal to 60 plus X sub 6. X sub 6 is equal to X sub 6. And so, well, you know, what happened to the X sub 3? Also a free variable. So you could tuck that in if you want. Or you could just say X sub 3 is free, however you want. All right, so X sub 3 equals X sub 3. All right, and that's because there is no pivot in X of 3 column. All right. So we go to parametric form. And I, I would say that that should be your go-to in terms of how to represent a final answer, or at least you know get you to the final answer, because more often than not, it, it's going to serve the purpose. But even even if it's not precisely what's needed, it'll at least get you kind of going in the right direction. All right? Uh, constant values. We got negative 40, 10, 50. Now you see, I'm going to screw myself up here now. The 3 comes in there. Okay, so negative 40, 10, and a 0 for the x of 3. Bless you. 50. 60, and a 0 for the x of 6. All right, our variables here, it, it, it's, we're always writing it in terms of the free variables. So we're going to need two pieces to our parametric. So we're going to need one for the x of 3. And we're going to need one for x of 6. So for x of 3, we have coefficients of 1, 1, 1 for the free variable. For x of 4, there's nothing. 5 and 6, there's nothing. For x of 6, we have nothing in x of 1, nothing in x of 2, nothing in x of 3. In x of 4, we got 1x sub 6. Same thing with 5 and 6. All right. Now, just in, in a little vocabulary here. Not really vocabulary. It's just how it ties together. You might remember the, the formula W. In parametric form, W equals P plus VH. Right. And so... This is the particular solution. And the 
this is the homogeneous vector. Alright, so in this case, the column vector negative 40 on down to 0 is going to be the P. And then this whole shibiggity bang here is the VH. And just to tie it together with the formulaic notation. All right, but we do need a something that allows us to determine the, the true weights. So just following the question, it says, assuming the flow must be in the directions indicated, find the minimum flows in the branches denoted by x2, 3, 4, and 5. All right, so we have to address that component of it. And the issue here is the negative. We don't want a negative. So if we know that x sub 1 is going to be equal to negative 40 plus x sub 3, and really just plus x sub 3, right? That That's based on what we had up, up above, but also based on the parametric, because anything with a, a value of 0 is going to zap away. So therefore, x sub 3 has to be greater than or equal to 40. All right, so if we're assuming that it's a minimum value of 40, then that allows that actually allows us to go further with this if we wanted to, but we still don't know x of 6. Really, all I need from you is to really state what the minimum value would be in order to make it a positive measure. Because right? beyond that, it really doesn't matter what x of 6 is, because it's, it's a free variable. Right? But x of 3 has to be at a minimum. X of 3 is free also, but it, at, in order for it to satisfy the network, it has to be at a minimum of 40, otherwise everything falls apart.